This is Scott the Fix Guy. Today we're dealing with a LG dishwasher that is not heating up. We're going to be changing the heating element. Could also be that the controller is not sending power to the heating element, but one possibility is the heating element itself is no longer working. So we're going to replace it. We're going to take out these two screws on the lower spray arm so we can lift it out of the way. Lift that up. I'm going to take out all these screws too that are holding in the upper sump filter assembly. There's a whole bunch of them. One of them is really short. It just holds on the tube that goes up to the upper spray arm. The rest of them are the same length. We're going to unplug it too or turn off the breaker. No chance of getting shocked. We're going to zip out all these screws. These are all the same size. They're all pretty long bunch of them and once we get them out we're going to move this spray arm tube out of the way. There's two clips here we're going to undo to get them out of the way using a standard head screwdriver and there's two clips at the top, uh, at the top too that you have to move out of the way. We move the arm out to the left to about 11 o'clock, pull it out and we're going to pull out this assembly. Now we're going to remove the impeller and we're going to turn our screw gun clockwise. So righty, it's usually righty tidy, this time it's righty loosey because these are reverse threads. So you want to go clockwise to the right. Pull up on this little piece. This just gets pulled straight up. Pull up on this assembly. And that's going to expose the heating element. And we're going to remove a uh, little screw that holds a bracket that's holding it in. You can see it here to your left. So one little Phillips head screw. We'll spin that out and we'll get this bracket off. And this thing here is the heating element. You do have to do some disconnecting from underneath too. So we're going to siphon all the water out of the sump by using a little turkey baster just so there's less water to spill. We're going to end up putting the dishwasher on its side. And remove any screws that are holding it into the cabinet. There might be a couple at the top or some on the sides. In this particular dishwasher it was only being held in by friction so I could just kind of wiggle it out. But there's probably some screws holding it in. Maybe a good idea too at this <clears throat> point to disconnect the um, drain line from underneath the sink. It's either attached to your garbage disposer or attached to your air gap. And you may need to shut off your water and disconnect the water. This one, the water line was long enough where I could just pull it out. Putting a towel down in case there's any water and I'm going to put the dishwasher on its side so I can get to the bottom components because there's a few things I have to disconnect to get to the heating element. It's kind of an easy job but there's a lot of little steps here. So I'm disconnecting all of the connections on the heating element. There's two spade connectors bringing it power and there's one sensor connector that goes to the temperature sensor. So I'm disconnecting all of those. I'm also going to take the connectors off of the pump. So there's two spade connectors. I'll pull those off and then I've got to remove a lot of the hoses that are attached to this bottom sump assembly. This is the hose that's attached to the, to the uh, drain. This is the discharge hose. I'm going to use my pliers to move this hose clamp out of the way and then I'll wiggle off the um, tube itself. So I have to end up removing the sump to be able to get out the heating element. Okay, now I'm going to remove this little hose same thing, I'll move the hose clamp and then I'll pull the hose off. Remove the motor connector that's bringing the power to the motor. And remove this little tiny one here that's to the turbidity sensor that senses how clean the water is. And I got those all disconnected, got the pump all disconnected. We got another little hose here at the bottom. I'll use my hose pliers to get that off. And then I got a couple of uh, 
pull that hose off. We've got a couple of connectors that are holding the sump assembly in. They're just one Phillips head screw. They're located at the, if you look at it like a clock, it'd be like 11 o'clock, this one. And there's one down at around 7 o'clock. I'm using a little ratchet with a Phillips head uh, driver because it's kind of an awkward angle. Kind of hard to get to with a regular Phillips screwdriver. So I'm going to spin that out. I'll do the one here at the 7 o'clock position. And once those are out, I can push the whole sump assembly into the dishwasher cabinet. And then I can get the thing on its feet and pull that whole assembly out so I can get the heater element out. I'm going to push it in. And then I'll get the machine up on its feet. I'll pull it out. And now I'm taking the heater assembly out. I'm loosening this one, this one uh, nut. And I use pliers to do it. You can use a ratchet works great too. Just spin that off. And now we can get the heating element out. You have to push pretty hard from the, from the bottom here and push it out of the plastic assembly. Grab our new one and put that in. Push it all the way in as far as it will go. And then I'm going to use a fair amount of pressure with my hands to really push this thing down and seat it totally flat or it won't go any further. And then I'll put that little nut in and as the nut uh, pushes down, it expands the rubber and makes this great watertight seal. Pretty cool. So put that nut in there, get it super tight. Grab my pliers. I think I just had pliers with me when I did this repair, but a uh, ratchet would be even better. There we go. So we get that fairly tight, so it's no chance of it leaking. And now we've got the new heater element in there. We can just put everything back together. So while I have this out, though, I'm going to put in this little bracket that helps hold the element in position. I'll put that one Phillips head screw in. I'll put a little liquid soap on the outside of this rubber seal that helps to seal the sump. It's called the sump seal. And that kind of lubricates it, and then it makes it easier to install. Let me get the machine back on its feet. Okay, here we go. I'm going to get the orientation right. So the pump, this white drain pump, is about at my, my 2 o'clock position. I'm going to push it in first into the sump in the cabinet, the, um, the hole for the sump, and then I'll push the um, end that's at my 12 o'clock position. I'll push that in first so that catches inside the cabinet. Then I'm going to push down at 6 o'clock. I'm going to make sure it's really flat, that the rubber seal is flat with the cabinet, there's nothing's raised up. I'll close the door and then I'll put it back on its side again and just reinstall all the little pieces. I'm just putting all the pieces back. Put these little brackets that hold the sump back in position. If you wanted to test whether it was the element that was the culprit for having trouble heating, or maybe it was the control that lives inside the door of the dishwasher, what you could do is you could take off the two spade connectors we see here, the red ones, that bring power to the element. And if you have a multi-tester, you could put your probes in there and then as the dishwasher is running, you can just get this thing on its feet 
and you could run the dishwasher and if you saw voltage going to the element, you saw 110 volts, then you would know that the controller is working and it's the element. If you never saw voltage going down there, then the controller would be the one that you'd have to replace. But usually it's the element. So I'm putting the spade connectors back onto the element to bring it power. I have the sensor connector put back on. I'm just reinstalling everything. And just take your time here, make sure everything goes back on. And this is a little thing for the variable motor. This is the power to the variable motor. Make sure everything's on tight. Here are the spade connectors bringing power to the drain motor. Here's the drain motor discharge. And there's another little tube here too that we have to put on. So we're gonna push that on and then make sure we got the hose clamp on too. There's so much disassembly done to do this procedure that sometimes we are rushing and we forget to put connector on or we don't get the hose tight and then we end up either with a leak or something isn't working. So really take your time, double check before you get this back on its feet that everything is tight and correct before you do your test. So I'm just double checking everything. All the connectors are tight, all the electrical connections are tight, hoses are tight. And then we can get it on its feet. When you test it afterwards, you run a cycle at about the 10 minute mark. If you open the door and you get a big plume of steam, and you know your heater's working. The 10 minute mark, if you open it and there's nothing, then you know that it's either the controller or the element is not working or the wire that's bringing the power to the element may be cut or damaged. But usually it is the element. So I'm putting the drain discharge hose back onto the disposer I'm going to get that nice and tight, plug it back in, get the power going, turn the water back on, and then I'll give it a test and I'll remove the kick panel and make sure that there's no leaks. Turn on the power. Oh, press the select button for the cycle. And it, it'll just start on its own. It'll drain, it'll fill. So I'm removing the two Phillips head screws that are holding on the kick panel so I can look in there. I'll remove the soundproofing material. And I'm gonna peer in there with my flashlight while it's filling and while it's circulating. And then I'll press drain. And even while it's draining to make sure that there's no leak and that everything's working. And at the 10 minute mark, I'll open the door and I should get a big plume of steam. Here's the picture of the heater. So thanks so much for watching and please subscribe when you get a chance. Thank you.